you love snowmobiling, boy, do I have a story for you. Hi, everyone. I'm Chad Colby, and with the amazing snow in the Midwest, I just had to quickly buy a snowmobile to go on this trip. So I purchased a 2021 Indy 650. Didn't really do much to it, quite honestly. I put some gear bags on it. We looked it over, picked it up on a Saturday. I quick ran to the New Glarus area, put a hundred and so 150 miles or so on it, breaking the machine in. And that was, uh, I guess over the weekend. And then Wednesday we were already making plans for the Epic ride. And the Epic ride was to leave Peru, Illinois, which is basically interstate 80 and I 39 in Illinois and travel North. So my day started early. I was at my good friends in Morton, Illinois, where my snowmobile was. We kind of just double-checked everything. I threw it in my pickup truck, and then I ran to Peru, which is about an hour and a half north. Now, Brian Leone had taken his dad over to Prophetstown because there was another group of sledders, good friends and company, customers of Leone's, who was going to do that same trip but leave from Prophetstown, which is about 50 miles by snowmobile from Peru. Nice part is they had a truck with a trailer and an extra sled, which is pretty slick. And those guys, they did a great job considering their group was so big. Once I got up to Peru, Brian Leone, good friend of mine, would have been on that trip, trust me. But he's had uh, kind of a bummed up knee here this winter. Helped me look over that sled real close. We made a few adjustments and then quite honestly, I needed to get on the road. Uh, It was about 1030 when I left Peru And my route was going to take me kind of across country over to Princeton, drop down into Tiskawa, where I'm from, to jump on the Hennepin Canal. But before I got on the canal, I had to drive through my friend Scott Grimmer's yard. I know he would have liked to have been on that trip with me, but his schedule wouldn't quite allow it. Then it was on to Tiskawa. Okay, guys, first update from the trip. Hold on, let me see how many miles I went. gone just 30 miles so i came from peru illinois i'm in tisqua tisqua is just a couple miles down uh down the road here this is where i grew up right on the hennepin canal super excited got a long ways to go and let me tell you conditions couldn't be better and i am so excited to get back on the trail the cool part is part of that stop in tisqua was to meet one of the editors from the bureau county republican and they did a great story about the ride After that, I jumped on the canal, and away I went. And actually, that canal ride, I've been doing really all my life since I was a young man. It's super easy. The canal actually starts probably six or eight miles east of Tisqua. It'll take you over to the Quad Cities to that Moline area, or you can take what's called the Feeder Canal, as you can see on that map to the left, up to the Sterling Rock Falls area. And I kind of figured that would be somewhere in that maybe 80-mile range and it was about 75 to tell you the truth so i knew i wanted to go a little bit farther than that before i stopped for fuel i was a little unfamiliar with the trail system up there but the cool part is a couple guys actually were waiting for me just to see if i needed anything on my trip but uh i had a copy of a local map and you know once you get out in these rural farm fields you know, you kind of have to have a pretty good idea where you're going. I was really blessed because Bill's group of nine sleds, they were in front of me breaking trail. So it was pretty easy for me just to follow them. Once I got uh, through that and kind of start working my way north, um, I made a fuel stop in Milledgeville. That was right at 100 miles since I left Peru, where I left obviously full of fuel. And then from there, it was sit back and enjoy the ride, and it was perfect. You had to be a little careful on some of the uh, crossings of the roads just because there was so much snow. I just stopped here and just took a picture just to give you an idea. This farmer here or somebody had opened up the field for snowmobiles to get in just because the snow was drifted and banked up real high along the roads, which is fantastic because there had to be a good solid you know, 15, 20 inches out in the fields, you can see right here. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. And it was a great ride. Now, we've spent a lot of time in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois riding whenever the snow's good. So there's a good trail system, as you can see right here near Freeport. But I knew 
Once I was getting close to Freeport, I was about to get on the Jane Addams Trail, which is a railroad grade. And from there, it's hammered down to the north. Now, I was kind of keeping track of the guys ahead of me, but I knew they were, you know, they were a good solid 70, 80 miles ahead. So I had my work cut out for me to catch them. Once I got to the Jane Adams, as you can see coming out of the field, you just jump on railroad grade and northbound you go. And that Jane Adams will take you all the way up to the basically the border into Wisconsin. That puts you on to the Badger State trails and away you go. Now, if you remember, I told you the week before we were up there breaking in this snowmobile and we had rode a lot of those trails. So we knew the conditions were really good. And trust me, they were. Um, where they could be groomed, they were. There was nothing really rough at all. A little bit in town, maybe uh, going through Monroe in a few places, but nothing at all. It was great, great riding. And, you know, obviously you got to keep an eye on fuel there. So my next fuel stop was in Cross Plains, Wisconsin, which was good. I needed fuel. You can see there I had about another gallon to go, but you had to be careful. You can see this wet hole right here, which I ended up going around. That water was about three feet deep. And let me tell you, when you're riding by yourself, you got to use your head. But uh, thank goodness for the latest technology in snowmobiles. You can see that light is super bright on that sled. Pushing 250 miles since I left at basically 10.30 in the morning. And I'd about had enough. Um, I knew the guys had kept going. And so I stopped in Baraboo, Wisconsin. And it was about 8.15. And I think those guys actually rode to about 9 o'clock. And best my my at my best judgment i knew i was probably a good 70 miles behind him but what a great first day got up in the morning early um, and departed about quarter to seven and conditions were super good so kind of my plan for the day was i talked to those guys and i figured they would stop for breakfast and lunch i was averaging somewhere around 35 miles an hour with all the stops so they stopped for breakfast and lunch i should have no problem catching them so there was a few tricky places, I'll give you that. Uh, crossing the river at the Wisconsin Dells was really not fun, uh, especially going down through town. On the groom on the Mark Trail was on, you know, bare asphalt. So that was a that that just as a snowmobiler, that's not good. <laughs> you can see here I'm fueling up uh, right at the Dells. And then there's one more shot right here. You can see the bridge I've go across and there's basically no snow. And then you got to go right down through the downtown. So thank goodness I had some nice carbides. But once I got out of that, man, conditions just couldn't have been better. Um, man, you want to talk about make up some time. I was able to really make up some good time right through here um, just because conditions were so good. I got asked a lot about what kind of economy the sled was. The first quart of oil I put in was it, uh, I think it comes up here on the screen, just short of 350 miles before the light came on, before I needed to put a quart of oil in. And actually that'll be enough to get me all the way to Eagle River. We kind of planned that before I left, but uh, you know, just uh, typical normal stuff on a big long trip like this. But I kept looking for the guys. Um, we had been communicating on our phones, texting back and forth. Um, I knew that if I could catch them by, you know, four o'clock, five o'clock, great. That was kind of my plan. If not, then I, I might not be able to. But the good part is I was able to make some really good time. Um, not a lot of snowmobiles on the trail. Um, it was midweek and conditions were, like I say, as you've seen in this video, the conditions are absolutely perfect. And uh, it just made it a lot of fun to sit back and, you know, quite frankly, enjoy the ride. So once we got north, um, trails, you know, were pretty good. Um, they got a little thin in a few places, but nothing, nothing terrible. You can see right here, uh, I'm in Weston, Wisconsin. Um, you know, I was getting fuel again, but I kind of kept, as we got closer to Wausau, you know, conditions really got thin. And when I say thin, I knew that if it warmed up for a day or two, these trails were going to go away. And that would certainly factor into my decision on the return, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, the good part was, is really when I got to Wausau, I knew I was catching those guys. And I was pretty excited about it because I'd been trying for a day, basically, to catch these fellas. But the trail systems up there, they've got um, junction marks on the signs. And you can see right here, Bill had sent me a message 
that were at intersection 28 and I was there about 15 minutes after them so ended up catching them um, just east of Tomahawk which was fantastic well you can see it right there on the map and then joined them and the entire group basically rode all the way up to Manaqua and then when we got to Manaqua the Prophetstown group they went over to Manitouche Waters and then Jim Leone and I rode over to Eagle River and it was snowing. The trails were really decent. Um, you know, like you would expect around that, you know, Monaco St. Germain area, because they get a lot of traffic. But there's our stats. Um, the Prophetstown guys did 583 miles. I did 623 coming from Peru. So Saturday morning, obviously, I wanted to go check on that sled. The carbides still look great. Thank you, Ron. Those things looked amazing. Then we threw the sled in the garage. I wanted to get that thing thawed out. We did have plenty of time to relax, which I'll be honest with you, was pretty nice. Then we were back in the garage, looking over the sled, and I knew I needed to get this thing checked over, get my bags packed, and get ready to head south. My best judgment showed that I needed to leave so I could go at least 90 miles or 100 miles south. So it looked like a nice easy ride. So I hung out with the Leones there till just about three o'clock or so. And then actually Jim rode with me into town. And then I fueled up in Eagle River. Um, but let me tell you, the trails were great. I just knew if I didn't leave then, I was going to run into a lot of traffic on Saturday. Um, being up there in the snowmobile mecca, if you would, of Wisconsin. So after saying so long to my friend Jim, it was southbound and down. And it was a great ride to Anago. I mean, it wasn't that far. It was about 90 miles. Uh, I think it took about three hours or so. But as you can see, the trails look, they look amazing. And they were. They were fast. They were smooth. It was easy. Um, it was fun and the technology worked great. I was using ride command. If you haven't seen it, um, here I am on a lake, just taking a little video of my snowmobile. You can see, you can go back and see your route, um, with the app, which is super, super cool. But yeah, I'm actually holding the phone with my left hand here. Um, you can see the trails. I mean, a little choppy in a few places, but not bad. Um, I'm riding the Matrix 650, which is just a fantastic snowmobile. Um, I can't say enough about it. The only thing I really did to that sled, I put uh, shaper bars on it. Um, those stud boy bars work really good. We've used them for a long, long time. And then obviously, I, as most of you maybe know, I used to race cross country for years. So I turn everything up on the suspension to as hard, to as firm as it would go, all the shocks, everything. And, you know, I had to be a little careful with it because it's not aggressive enough uh, for my liking. But on this trip, that's what, that's what I had to deal with. So um, it worked good. And you can see the trails were good. Um, the farther south I went, you can certainly see it right there. Um, they get a little thin and they didn't last very long. So this is Friday when I just went south 90 miles and some of these trails were actually closed by Monday. So um, once you got much farther south, you can see here I arrived at about six o'clock. I believe I ordered in a pizza and was pretty excited about the next morning and was planning to leave early and just see how the day went. I really had no intentions of going all the way back, but you know how that goes. Sometimes when you're feeling good, you just keep going. It was chilly that morning, though. It was 12 below, and that turned out to be a little bit of an issue for me. Um, when I got suited up, I, I kind of took a little longer than my normal to get outside, and I got a little chilled, and it took a while to shake that. Um, you know, you can see there I left at 6 a.m., and about 11 o'clock or so, I ended up stopping at a Polaris dealer in Hancock, and I bought a different jacket and put some gauntlets on my handlebars, and then I was fine. But uh, it was just a it was a beautiful morning. Um, I mean, I went till almost ten o'clock before I even met another snowmobile. And you can see by these pictures, it just doesn't get any better than this if you're a snowmobiler. Um, but man, did I make a, make some good time. There's Westfield. You guys have all seen that if you traveled up north. You guys know exactly where that is. How cool is that? Um, but these trails are great. Um, once you got really south of Westfield, though, they were getting thin, um, especially, you know, around that Wausau area. Once you got to, uh, you know, 
Monroe, they had lots of snow. You can see right here some of those thin places, but a beautiful sunny day. I had to swap goggles a couple times just to uh, because of all the sun. But once I got down south, I hate to say that, it sounds kind of weird. You can see here in Monroe, I'd already gone 381 miles since I left Leone's. So, you know, I, I only had a little over 140 miles to go. And basically, I had already made up my mind, I'm going to go ahead and just ride this thing back in. Uh, I was kind of thinking I'd be about a nine o'clock time frame was what I was shooting for um, based on the time I made on my way up. So I topped off in Monroe at the gas station we use there all the time. And I knew that wasn't going to be quite enough to get me back. And you know this, um, went back on the Badger, got back on the Jane Adams, and I'm on those same trails that we were just on a day and a half before. Um, plenty of snow. The difference was is once I got off the Jane Adams, those fields that we were in, they're not marked the best, but I was pretty fortunate. I actually ran into uh, some local guys there that knew where they were going. So I just, I ran with them most of the way, um, decided not to grab fuel in Milledgeville, um, thought, well, I'll just grab some fuel, you know, probably in Princeton is what I'm going to have to do. I knew I was going to have enough to make it. But as you can see right here, it was, you know, really flat light and all those fields. It was nice that I ran into a couple local guys so I didn't have to worry about where I was going. But if you look on that map, even when it got dark, it was no problem. Now this right here, this is on the Hennepin Canal. And you can see right here, this is kind of home for me. So I really knew where I was. The good part was I had texted my friend Scott Grimmer. And that's the yard I circled on the way up. And Scott had a little bit of fuel there. So instead of going into Princeton, thank you, Scott. We just added maybe two or three gallons. And then I was on my way. You can see the map right there. I almost followed my exact same track back to north of Peru to Leone Polaris, which is right on the plank road there, just north of Interstate 80. And uh, let me tell you, it was, a, it was a hell of a feeling to pull back in. Um, I'd had my helmet buckled since 1130 in the morning. The Grimmers offered, come on in, have some food, take a break. And I'm like, no, if I do that, I'll stop. But uh, the sled worked perfect. Um, the best part was there were a lot of people that had reached out to me, um, farmers and people I know that if you need something along the way, let us know. But look at the totals. I rode 1155, the group from Prophetstown, over 5,000 miles. And as a group, we rode almost 6,400 miles in just really a few days. So it was, uh, it was really, really awesome. Um, but thanks to Brian and the, the Leone family for helping me out like they have. Shoot, the first slit I bought from them was back in 1991. And I'll be honest with you, I think we were talking about doing this trip back then. Um, I did manage to take my youngest daughter snowmobiling just a couple days after that ride, and uh, she had a blast. So maybe she'll get to do this one day. Thanks for coming along for the ride, guys. Mm -hmm.